Well, we're coming to the end of our vacation in Greece. And something I do every year, even though I've only done probably six, seven weeks on the boat here in Greece. Um, we've probably only put two or three hundred hours on the engine, if that. Um, I always do an oil change uh, for winterization. Now, in the UK, and certainly in a lot of Europe, I would always recommend doing the oil change uh, for winterization at the end of the, end of the year. Uh, so the engine sits there with fresh oil and no contamination of the oil over the winter. If, you, if you're able to get down and turn your engine over every couple of weeks, even better. But for me out here in Greece, uh, when we leave Chianti, we're, we're not back until April. Uh, so it's very hard to do. So there's a few things I do for winterization. Uh, what I'm going to do to start with is show you uh, the simple oil change on a Beta 75. Um, I don't do anything clever, uh, so here we go. First, first things first, I always speak to Beta Marine or you know, whoever's manufacturer is and make sure you're, you've got the right oil filters and everything set up and the right oil to replace. Where we are in Greece it's really hard to get the right oils but I've managed to get a, a local garage that actually stocks the oil I need. So that's the first thing. The second thing is pumping the oil out. Uh, obviously clean seas it's really important to collect all the oil without it dripping everywhere. On our um, beta we've got 75 we've actually got an oil lift pump but don't forget two things before you start pumping the oil is one to take this this bung out which is a threaded bung and secondly down there is the stop tap. The number of people I've seen trying to pump the oil out of this and damaging it because they didn't realise there's a stop tap that needs to be opened first so make sure you do that and then pump all the oil out. Two little tips when pumping the oil I tend to use these one and a half litre water bottles which is great. The local garage where I buy the oil from actually takes this oil back for free so we're being sensible in recycling. The other little tip is run the engine up about five or six minutes so it just gets warm. It makes pumping the oil and it also picks out all the impurities and anything else that's floating around in the oil through the pump because it's picking it up from the sump. But it's all obviously been stirred up. If you're doing this in a boat yard when the engine's cold, you're never going to pull everything out the bottom. So there's another little tip. So, oh, so I've pumped out all the oil. The next thing is to take the filter off. And again, I've made sure I've got the right filter before I start. One really stupid thing with these is they get really tight. Uh, don't forget the old adage of lefty loosey, in other words left handed for loosening and righty tighty for taking off. Uh, I really detest using the um, some of the uh, uh, wrenches that you can buy because some of them will puncture this very thin, uh, stain, uh, this very thin steel filter. Uh, you can buy some with, with belts on which are a lot better but try and get good access to it it's never very easy in a boat where you can actually get it on uh, simply so i'm going to take this one off now with plenty of rags around it to make sure that we uh, don't drop it in the bilges so i've got it off don't leave it too long because it's got loads of oil in it and i put it in the actual bag that comes from the manufacturer and as you can see i've been a bit crafty by using a plastic bag and some rags uh, underneath the filter itself so you can just see where it fits there and there's the ring on there and before you fit the new one don't forget to put a little smidgen of oil around the rubber here for when you put it back on so I've taken off the old filter as you can see taken off the rubber gasket that was stuck on there here's the new filter and I've uh, put a little smear of oil around it ready to put it on so I'm going to put that on next and get it as tight as possible hand tight do not use wrenches then I'll fill the engine up to the dipstick uh, and then we'll give it a little start and then stop it and then recheck it because obviously this is going to take about three quarters of a pint of oil. So there's the oil field to back on and I've tightened up as best as I possibly can and you see with using that bag and then a few rags there's no drips from anywhere so I'm now going to refill the engine with oil. Now you may think this is a bit of an idiot's guide to this but the one that says oil is where you need to put the oil not the hot water. Believe it or not several years ago I went out to Italy to do an insurance claim where the engineer, qualified engineer, had actually put the antifreeze into this one. So you can imagine what would have happened then. Right, I'm going to fill this up with the oil. Just fill it slowly and gently. Using the bottle tipped at an angle, you've got far more control than tipping it the wrong way. 
So I'm just putting this in eight liters of oil. So with the dipstick, I've just put about eight liters in. So on the dipstick, I've already wiped it once. You can just see it's just coming up onto the bottom of the dipstick now. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys say, why aren't you wearing gloves? I've actually put barrier cream on because in 40 degrees of heat out here, it's too hot to wear gloves and I'm really useless in gloves. So that's, that's me, but I don't touch very much oil these days. If you're an engineer using oil all the time, you should use gloves. So we're just on the bottom of the dipstick. So I'm now gonna put a liter in at a time uh, and just see how we come up on this. Um, and then once I get two thirds of the way up the dipstick, I will then start the engine very briefly, just to literally turn it over to get oil into the oil filter uh, without really letting it start. And then I'll fill it up just to just below the top of the dipstick because that's where my old man always used to say, keep an oil, never on the top of the oil, just, just a fraction under. So when you do these dipsticks, you know, pull it out, give the dipstick a wipe, then put it back in again. And when you're filling, give it a good 10, 10 minutes or so just to make sure it's settled out and it's right. Now we're going to go for an engine start. Okay, I've done everything. I've filled it up to the brim and we're going to do a quick two second start and then turn it straight off. Now that should be enough to get the oil filter down here full of oil. And then the oil and the dipstick here will naturally drop. So I'll then now recheck it and then that topped up back up to just underneath the dipstick should do the job. And that's a simple oil change.